What is up guys, I hope everyone is doing well and having an awesome weekend. So in today's video we are going to do the very last build guide in the Unilad series and if you haven't been watching the series, basically what it is is I take you guys through a step by step on how to build a certain PC. So if you missed the other PCs I will leave them linked down below. And if you would like to see more in this series, maybe a Ryzen build etc, let me know down below what you would like to see and I will check out if I can make it happen. So as always, I would just like to thank the sponsor of this series and that is of course box.co.uk and special thanks go out to Cooler Master UK, Asus UK and of course Unilad themselves who without this it wouldn't be possible. So with that said guys, let's jump in and take a look at the parts we will be using in today's build guide. Okay, so first up the processor that we are using is the Intel i7-7700K and we will be pairing it with the Asus Z270 Maximus Hero motherboard that just happens to be a favourite of mine. Cooling the CPU, we will be using the Cooler Master Master Air Maker 8 which is certainly a beefy cooler and should do the job. For the RAM, we are using 16GB of HyperX Savage, clocked at 3000MHz. The graphics card of choice is the ASUS Strix GTX 1080 OC Edition, which I have reviewed before on the channel and will leave linked down below. The power supply is the Cooler Master V1200 Platinum, and we are going to be building all this inside the Cooler Master Master Case Maker 5, which is definitely a pretty awesome looking case and I will be doing a video series shortly with another YouTuber, so definitely stay tuned for that. So enough of the chit chat, let's go ahead and I will show you guys how to put this PC together. So let's start by installing our CPU. Make sure to always hold the CPU by the sides to avoid damage and take note of the triangle on the CPU as we will be matching this up to the triangle on the socket itself. So to install, simply lift the latch as you can see and place the CPU in the socket. No force at all is needed, just set it down there and you can go ahead and close the latch over. And when you do, the cover will pop off and you can put this by for safekeeping. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and install the RAM. Take note of the notch on the RAM stick itself as we will be matching this up to the notch on the dim slot of course and when you are ready press down on the two grey dim slots to go ahead and open them up. Now simply put the RAM in by pushing it downward until it clicks into place. You just have to use a little bit of force here and it will click in with no trouble at all. Ok so now let's prepare the CPU cooler as this is quite a big cooler and there are a few steps but it isn't too hard at all. First thing we need to do is remove both fans from the cooler. Simply press the latches inward to release and slide the fan upwards and you will be good. Now take the Intel bracket that you can see here and install it from the rear of the motherboard by pushing the four legs through the holes on the motherboard, it's really that simple. Now get the four standoffs that you can see and screw them into the pegs that you just fed through the motherboard. Next, take the two Intel brackets that you can see here and set them on top of the standoffs that you just installed and when you are happy with the positioning, go ahead and attach them in place using these four thumb screws. Okay, so now for the last steps before we actually place the cooler on. First of all, put some thermal paste on the processor. A pea sized amount is absolutely fine, just don't go overboard. And most importantly, make sure to remove the plastic label from the bottom of the cooler or you will have major issues. So when you have done that, you can go ahead now and set the cooler down in place as you can see. To attach the cooler, we use these two smaller thumb screws and secure each side of the cooler. From there, you can now reattach the fans by sliding them down into place. Now that the cooler is installed, take this fan adapter out of the box and plug both fans into it, as well as the LED power cable, and then simply plug this into your CPU fan header on the board located here. So one last thing to do before we put the board in the case, and that is to install our M.2 drive, as it is easier to install it while the board is out of the case. You will need the standoff that's included in the motherboard box, and it looks like this. And this is put on the hole labelled 2288. Now take note of the notch on the M.2 drive and line it up with the slot and simply push it into place. From there you can use this tiny screw, again included with the motherboard, and secure the M.2 down. Ok so now before we install the motherboard into the case, we have to go ahead and install the standoffs that you will find in the metal tin included with the case. 
To install the standoffs, we use this silver socket and you just simply put one standoff inside it and it makes it super easy to install. There are seven in total and all you have to do is make sure when you are looking at the holes in the motherboard that you put a standoff in every single hole that is labelled with a number one and you are good to go. There are seven in total. When you are finished, you can go ahead and install the IO shield and all you have to do here is push it into place. It does take some force, so just get it in there. So now we can go ahead, take the motherboard and place it into the case. Just line it up with the IO shield on the rear and of course the standoffs that you just installed. From there, you can grab the motherboard screws and again, you can find them in the long packet. They are clearly labeled and all you have to do is go ahead and secure it down and there are nine screws in total. Just make sure to tighten them in a crisscross pattern to avoid any stress on the motherboard. Now it's time to go ahead and install the power supply. Grab all the leads that you see here and go ahead and attach them to the power supply. Everything is clearly labelled so just take your time and you will have no issues. And when you are finished you should have something that looks like this. To install the power supply, remove the four thumb screws from the rear to release the bracket and then you can slide the power supply into its little holder, cables first of course with the fan pointing downward. From there, reattach the bracket, then you can use the four screws which are exactly the same as the ones you used to screw the motherboard down and secure the PSU in place. Now we can go ahead and install the hybrid fan switch and this is done by removing the second bottom slot cover and replacing it with this. It's a very simple job so just take your time and you will have no trouble. From there we can go ahead and install our hard drive. Pull one of the drive cages from the bottom and you will notice it has four protruding pins. These are used to secure the hard drive and all you have to do is stretch it out a little and simply put the pins inside the screw holes on the hard drive. When you are finished, just slide it back into place. Okay, so now the fun part begins. Let's go ahead and wire everything up. First, give the motherboard power using the 24 pin connector and attaching it like you see here. Now give the CPU some power using the labelled cable and plugging it into the top left of the motherboard. Just always make sure that your connections are nice and tight. Now grab the HD audio cable and attach it to the pins labelled AAFP. Like everything else we are about to install, it can only go one way so just take care. Now attach the USB 3 cable to the USB 3 pins on the board and again these are clearly labelled. From there we will go ahead and install our front panel connectors and thankfully the motherboard comes with a nice adapter to make this super easy. Just match them all up. From there, take care to ensure they are all secure and round the correct way. Then simply attach the USB cable to the header that you see here. So now that we have all of our cables attached, we can go ahead and install our graphics card. First job is to remove these two brackets and keep hold of the screws as we will need them again shortly. Now just press down on the tab to open up the PCIe slot. And from there, you can line the graphics card up and simply push it into place and you should feel a nice click to let you know that it has went in. You can now attach the two screws from earlier while supporting the card just to make sure that it is not sagging. To give the graphics card power, we will use the cables labelled PCIe and connect them up like so. So now if we turn the case around, you will notice a few cables in the back that need connected. First of all, we have the Molex that delivers power to the included fan hub, so go ahead and connect it to the power supply. The fan hub also requires SATA power, so take one of your SATA connections from the power supply and connect it up. Now we can go ahead and connect our hard drive. First of all, we need to give it some juice with a SATA cable, so go ahead and plug one in. Next, take a SATA cable from the motherboard box, connect one end to the hard drive like you see, then the other end goes into the first SATA port on the motherboard. Now all that's left to do is make sure all of our cables are tidied up and we can go ahead and test if the machine works. If all is well, your build should boot into the BIOS and all of your peripherals and hard drives will be installed. Okay, so if you followed this along and you are in the BIOS, then I'm pretty sure you will be happy. All that's left to do now is go ahead and install Windows, which is a very simple process. It's actually as easy as putting some files on a USB stick, plugging it into the computer and installing. I will leave a video linked down below just so you guys can follow that along if it's not something you are used to doing. So as always, all the parts are listed down below in the description. And over the next few days, I will be benchmarking the system just to see how it performs. And of course, I will make a video letting you guys know. So that pretty much rounds the series up. After the benchmarking video, it will be over. But if you would like to see more, just let me know down below as I mentioned earlier. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.